Hello, Grandmaster Ware with Mount Tabor Grand Lodge YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you and working for you and bringing you information thus far. Again, I'd like to point out Masonic Maturity through Scripture. This book will be of added value to you. Uh, it's a lot of information in here, and it is designed to, as I said, take you from out in the rain and bring you to uh, the place where you were designed to be and design and operate the way you're supposed to operate. Mount Tabor Grand Lodge YouTube channel is accomplishing exactly what it's set out to accomplish, and that is to bring light and information to the world of Freemasonry and the world around Freemasonry. We've been getting word and feedback from people all across the world, and uh, it's, a, it's a good feeling to know that we are of added value to others. Uh, our mission, as I said many months ago, is to create walking epistles within the Masonic Order and assist its members in elevating themselves in godly levels of peace, power, and prosperity through the correlated uh, Bible and Masonic teachings. So that's our mission, and it seems like we're making some headway thanks to you. I really, we really appreciate your, your support and your patronage. We're going to talk about uh, three very important things this, this time. Uh, three things that are imperative if you are going to be successful in this life, on this earth, at this time. And that is knowledge, responsibility, and control. I like to say KRC. And we can start off with knowledge. We can look at First Kings and, and visit with King Solomon and uh, observe how he manifested, how he developed and grew his wisdom. Yes, he asked for it, but it wasn't instantaneous. He had to have examples and opportunities to use and, and grow his wisdom and develop it into what it should be. Uh, same with uh, Jabez and the increase of his territory. We ask, we seek, and then knock. And the knocking is the working. And that's, what, that's what's required. But we have to ask and we have to seek. And when we go to Hosea 4 and 6, it tells us in terms of knowledge, it says, my people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Now here in Hosea, knowledge is not what we have been told by people or our parents or our friends. But knowledge here is what is revealed to us through the Word of God because that's the true, one true source of knowledge. You know, light and knowledge are synonymous and the absence of both is the same thing. It equates to the same thing and that's ignorance and darkness. So, Imagine, or go back, because when a candidate is initiated, his first demand is for light. He's asking for revelation. He's asking to be for the veils and the, the curtains to be pulled back so that he can uh, no longer operate off of hearsay and, and biases. He wants to actually see and be able to recognize what is going on, where he's going, and how he is to do things. So that's all Revelation is. Once he receives it, uh, that material light provides, it is very important because it provides everything he needs. It sheds a light on what he needs in order to uh, increase his life and to live a better life. You know, Masons are said to be in search of light, more light, and further light until he reaches its fullness. Now, here's a um, test or an assignment for you. Where is a Mason's feet planted when he reaches 
the fullness of light. Okay? So what we want to know is when a mason reaches the fullness of light in his, at the end of his search or in his search, where is his feet planted? Please send me the answers, your, your answers through video, uh, YouTube. You can type them in. Let's see what you come up with. Now, masonry doesn't create light. Uh, it can only transmit and share. So actually, any Freemason, all Freemasons are supposed to be conductors of this divine current. And then science also taught us that the absence of light is the absence of knowledge. So the opposite, opposite of knowledge is ignorance and therefore darkness. And, free, and in Freemasonry, darkness is emblematical of ignorance. So remember, we want to be in search of light, more light, until we reach the fullness of light. But now understand, darkness does serve a purpose. The scripture says all things work together for the good. So darkness allows your body to rejuvenate itself while we're asleep. Uh, it can also uh, give rest to our conscious mind by removing distractions that we see and hear. It also can allow the Spirit of God to commune with our spirit so that with the coming of a new day, we are being brought to light which begins a new world. And in a, in a candidate's position, when he receives that light, he begins his search for deep truth. Now, the search for deep truth is nothing more than a quest for knowledge. And the knowledge he, he begins to search for is universal and applicable to all. You see, knowledge uh, that can be universally applied to our homes, our families, our jobs, our Masonic Lodge, and mankind. Now, we've all heard the uh, story about the body parts, the heart, the uh, head, the legs and arms and the rectum, and they're arguing about who's the most important. And if any one of them shut down or don't operate properly, it creates additional stress on the other parts. The most effective tool we have to fight this stress and confusion within ourselves is organized knowledge. Knowledge that probably contradicts the teachings of both our parents and the environment that we grew up in. You see, God gives, just like those organs of the body, he gives each person a talent and a purpose, not a title. We are to do and accomplish our goals with what is given to us. Now, in order to do that, you have to know the truth about your, your, your talent and your purpose. So, there are rules and regulations in operating with one another and apart, individually and collectively. So we got to make sure that we fit into the group and the overall scope of things. It is only an ignorant person that thinks he or she can operate alone. It's only an ignorant group of people that think that they can only operate alone. Remember, your food, your shelter, your health, even protection are all dependent upon others. So when we look at all of creation, everything and everyone is purposed to aid and assist another. This is the foundation of Freemasonry. So whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. And that's in 1 John 2 and 9. So again, I've said it many times, we are interdependent creatures. 
I'm reminded of the story of the man who had no legs. And it was, of course, virtually impossible for him to get, to get around. But he winded up meeting a man who couldn't see. And so they got together. The man with no legs got on the back of the man that couldn't see. And together they were able to travel. We are all waiting on someone to do their job so we can do our job. If you go back to 1 Kings with King Solomon, you'll find that he solicited the aid of tribesmen and countrymen from other countries to build the temple. The temple he built was dedicated to God and was used in his service. As Masons, we should aim at this in the building of our house that's made without hands. You see, knowledge gives you peace. The man with no legs and the man with no eyes found peace and increase because they were able to work together. The next thing we're going to, uh, let's go to responsibility. And this is a little tricky one here. You see, many people look for reasons to underperform or get more for less. <clears throat> Everything a Mason do or does is to be fair and just whether he is the employer or the employee. You are first responsible for working congruently with each and every department, group, and or workers in your area or on your job or at home or in the lodge. You see, authority can be delegated, but responsibility uh, is, it falls solely upon you and the responsibility for you to take care of the task that you are assigned. So we have to be responsible. And you say, okay, well, hey, I'm not a leader. I, I, I'm just a worker. Well, bear in mind that you have the authority to do and the responsibility to do your part. Remember, in becoming... A, a perfect Ashler, you sh you're supposed to fit into the area that you're needed without any gaps, holes, uh, without creating a weakness. So again, the res you're responsible for your area of work, and your work should your work results should fit into the bigger group and the organization, just like a piece of a puzzle. Now, your actions cannot be too far to the left, too far to the right. You have to become a stone that fit perfectly into the greater unit. You know, unified, consistent, apply, consistently applied pressure can change and move mountains. And unfortunately, it's most of the time uncomfortable for us to have that applied pressure. But by exhibiting brotherly love, truth, and relief, regardless of age, race, religion, Masonic writ, it always yields huge returns to the giver. So understand this, 1 Corinthians 3 and 8 says, he who plant, plants and he who waters are one and each will receive his wages according to his labor. So the responsibility you exhibit will return unto you. Here's a big fear. Numbers 14, 18 says, the iniquities, basically the iniquities of the Father can flow down four generations. So if I'm not being responsible with the task that I'm being assigned to, I might not pay the penalty. But according to the word of God, 
it can visit, that penalty can visit my son, grandson, grand, great-grandson, or great-great-grandson. So the, that should be a big fear in every man's life. What is he leaving on generations to come? You know, responsibility is power. And Martin Luther King said once that we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. You see, fools allow others to dictate the doctrine that they live by. Uh, you neglect your responsibility to study and to apply true knowledge, and you give God reason to do what the second part of Hosea 4 and 6 says, and that is, because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject thee, that thou shalt no, shall no, be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. In other words, when we don't do what we're supposed to do, we don't obligate God to bless our generations to come. In fact, we give him cause to negate them, to ignore them, to forget them. So there's a lot hinging on this word and this part of the puzzle, the responsibility. Moving to control, KRC. Control is a hot topic. Masons are to stand steadfast on the concept of universal fatherhood um, and universal brotherhood, even if it's in contrast to worldly beliefs. The term control freak is thrown around loosely and generally by those that are not in control, the ones that are, we like to call haters. You see, some of them present a good case, but anything with two heads is a freak. So when we join the lodge, there is a seat, a position, a station, okay, of control. And we are to adhere to that and understand that. We should not be indecisive in following uh, the, the task we are assigned. And understand this, if you do have an issue or a concern, there is a way for you to stand up, be recognized, and voice your concerns because silence is consent and at the same time it's, um, it's bad if you do know something and you do not share it with your brother. Remember, we are supposed to be, we are our brother's keepers. So you need to know your rules and regulations. You can't be in control of your actions and you shouldn't be, you can't be governed by rules and laws if you don't know what they are. You need to know what rules and regulations you're being governed by. So, if you're going to do as Masons do, you're going to know the rules and regulations, and the entrusted task you will do, perform, without having to be micromanaged. So, you must make decisions, and if you make decisions, then you are placing yourself in a, in a state of control. This is your vessel. You're supposed to be in control of your vessel. A true Mason or a Christian is never tribal, nor do they possess the Babylonian mentality of fear, greed, and corruption. So to be in control of your life, living, and your future, you must, as a good Mason will, know what to do, how to do, and most importantly, when to do a thing. So when you manage a little properly, you, you will be given much. So in summary, control is the foundation for prosperity. If you go to Galatians 5, verses 22-23, self-control is one of the nine components of the fruit of the Spirit. So, in summary, take a moment, reread or re-listen to all of this, 
Think about it. All of the success principles needed for success in any venture are all incorporated within KRC, Knowledge, Responsibility, and Control. Those are the, when you apply knowledge, responsibility, and control to the areas of your life, your job, your lodge, your chapter, you will see a major plus difference in your life. You will succeed where others fail. You will have peace, power, and get increase. Again, I thank you for your, attend for your uh, um, attention. I ask that you continue to uh, support us by liking us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, send me your comments in terms of uh, questions or what have you. And also, uh, if you'd like to make a donation, you can look in the About section of our YouTube channel. Our Cash App is there. My phone number is there. My email address is there. Let's stay in contact. Let's grow together. Thank you very much.